What's up, Unlocking Your Inner Strength listeners? How would you like to know about the three types of days that you can use to maintain a healthy balance while still striving to be the best in the world at what you do? Well, I have good news for you. I've put together a special report showing you exactly how to do this. It's normally $45, but since you're a loyal listener to the show, you can get it for only $10 at unlockingyourinnerstrength.com forward slash time. You're listening to The Inner Strength Show. If you want to step into your greatness, you've come to the right place. Here is your host, the human strength expert, Kyle Newell. Hey everybody, it's Kyle Newell once again with episode number 96 of Unlocking Your Inner Strength. Today we're going to be speaking about the seven bodily fitness systems that need to adapt to each workout and why that's important. Before we get to that, I want to talk a little bit about fear. I always think it's good to talk about mindset stuff, mind mapping, brain science, all this stuff ties together. And if you can't master your mind, forget it. Uh, You're going to have no shot in life at living the life that you want. And realize, too, that when I say mastering the mind, your mind is plastic, okay, and elastic, meaning it's there's plasticity to it. It's going to change throughout your life, just like your body. So you're never going to fully master it, Um, but you got to keep working on it, growing it, training it, learning how it works, recognizing patterns, that type of thing. One of the groups I was in this, uh, one of the groups I am in, I was listening to uh, one of the trainings from last week in which the guy was talking about how there's rational fear and irrational fear. And he was partly correct with that, meaning that no fear is rational, if you know what part of the brain it arises from, the amygdala and the brainstem. It's a survival thing. All fear is survival-based. So your amygdala, which is think of your lizard brain, is always scanning the environment for threats. Now, what he was trying to get across, and the point is well taken, He was trying to get across that most of the things that we fear, we should not fear. Yet they cause the same exact response within the body as an actual physical threat. Most of the time, our life is not on the line when it comes to to fear. You have the sympathetic nervous system, freeze, flight or fight. If your life was actually in a line, if there was a bear coming at you, an attacker, an intruder in the house or whatnot, then those things are viable options. If uh, those things are not really happening, your brain and your endocrine system, your adrenal glands, they, they respond the same way. There's a great book called Why Zebras Don't Get Ulcers. Okay. And in that book, the gist of it basically is if a zebra is getting chased by a lion, it either gets it eaten or it gets away and the stress response goes back to normal. Humans, we have it turned on all the time because of artificial stressors, technology, worry. We are the only species that really worries because worrying is thinking about the future in, in a negative light. Other species have patterns and they arise from predictions, but it's more automated. So most of the stuff you fear is out in the future, or actually all the stuff, and again, unless it's a physical threat. So it's out in the future. The future does not exist. The future, if you look at the timeline of your life, lays out uh, in the future tense, okay? When the future gets here, it's now. So the future literally is a figment of your imagination. So if you can frame it like that, everything that you fear is imaginary, really. And the reason you fear it is because it, there's no, there's not as much clarity and, and you don't have a prediction necessarily around that particular thing. But most fear is not warranted. I'll say that. Not that it's because you can confuse the terminology. All right. Now let's get to what I wanted to talk about today. So when we train or when you train, People want to just have this mentality that if they train harder and they diet harder, everything's going to happen. And this kind of goes to what I've been talking about with the uh, fitness pizza pie. In my point of view, you have six things that we need to focus on as far as fitness, which are external things, but they impact the internal. 
You have exercise and nutrition. Those two are the easy ones that everybody knows about. You have play slash fun. You have sleep, you have relaxation, and you have learning. Funny how that ties into uh, some of my notes here with the seven different biological systems. And I'll add the brain in. So, you know, like it's kind of not in here and it kind of is to make it eight. But the seven different biological systems that need to adapt when we train or when we diet and all this stuff. What's up, Unlocking Your Inner Strength listeners? How would you like to know about the three types of days that you can use to maintain a healthy balance while still striving to be the best in the world at what you do? Well, I have good news for you. I've put together a special report showing you exactly how to do this. It's normally $45, but since you're a loyal listener to the show, you can get it for only $10 at unlockingyourinnerstrength.com forward slash time. Anybody can make somebody train hard and get sore and vomit. That is not coaching. That's being a moron. When you realize that not all training affects everybody the same way, just as all diets don't affect everybody the same way, it means you can't simplify this stuff to mathematical equations. However, I do believe training and nutrition is simple. Let me go into this a little further and then that'll make sense. So the seven different things that need to adapt when you train, and these go into your lifestyle as well, and with nutrition or your cardiac. Most people... Do not understand that there's a cardiac adaptation to training, even if it's not slow, long distance like you think of when you think of cardio. Your muscular system drives your cardiovascular system. So the more muscle you work, the more cardiac output you're getting, the bigger and stronger it has to come back. Now, just like with muscle, because your your heart, your cardiac, or your heart is a muscle, okay, the cardiac muscle, it needs to respond. The training is a stressor to that. It doesn't actually happen during the training. Cardiopulmonary. Okay, so we're talking about lungs here. So with your lungs, same thing, adaptation. Now, it depends uh, what you, you know, if you have type 2 fibers, type 1 fibers. But everybody's got a different makeup. Some people are, are better at slow, long distance and aerobic exercise. Some people are better at explosive type movements. But that system needs to adapt. So your cardiac system needs to adapt. Your cardiopulmonary needs to adapt. Your hormonal system, the third one. Your hormones, uh, they drive everything, and that's what's going to drive your body composition. Your sleep's going to affect that. Uh, your sleep's going to affect all this stuff, and, and, and the six pieces of the fitness pizza pie are going to affect all these things. But the hormonal system must adapt. Detoxification, so there's waste products when we train, and with nutrition, that we need to detoxify, okay? So that's an adaptation. Metabolic adaptation, so you have different parts of your metabolism, Depending on how much oxygen debt you create in your training, that's going to affect your, your, your uh, metabolic rate in the short term. Affecting your metabolism in the long term, you're not going to increase it drastically. So all these gimmicks out there and all these things that say, oh, it boosts your metabolism with this secret food, those are a bunch of hooey pooey. They don't exist. If you put on a pound of muscle, that equates to about 10 extra calories burned per day. So you, you do the math, and that's a lot for the body. So, But there is a meta, metabolic adaptation. Central nervous system. So the nervous system has to adapt, okay? You have different parts of your nervous system. The ones we focus on, right, are your sympathetic, which is freeze, flight, fight, and your parasympathetic, which is rest, digest, recover, and, and chill out. So, so far, you have the cardiac uh, system needs to adapt, cardiopulmonary needs to adapt, hormonal needs to adapt, detoxification needs to adapt, metabolic needs to adapt, central nervous system needs to adapt. And these are all things that need to adapt to training. It's not as simple as go train and do it again as hard as you can the next day. Everybody's going to vary with this stuff. And then your neuromuscular, the mind-muscle connection, how it's tied in, how your muscles are tied into your nervous system, how much can you activate, how much strength do you have, how much speed can you produce, how much force can you produce. All these things. So this means, depending on what you're training for, you can alter these things in, in the stressors. You can train these things, these seven different biological systems differently. You can apply different stressors to them to get the uh, desired result. So you have specific adaptations to impose demands. But the reason I wanted to go over that, not that you have to memorize those seven biological systems that need to adapt to training. It's just that it's not uh, as simple as do this many reps, train as hard as you can day after day. You're going to fry yourself if you do that. These things have to adapt. So my whole point was you have a lot of stuff that has to adapt to training. More is not better. Three, four days a week of intense exercise for most people is enough. Then you have to walk, you got to chill out, you got to sleep, you got to do all this other stuff, right? You have to play on those other days. So everybody talks about, uh, or at least it was for a while, I need to deload. I need to, deloading, that, that's, oh, what that means basically is go for a hike. 
Go for go for, go out on a paddleboard. Go for a bike ride with your kid when they're attached to your back. Go for a, a walk with your dogs. All right, you just can't go hard all the time. And this all ties back into before we wrap up to six pieces of the fitness pizza pie. I'm going to keep hammering this home because it's very important that people get this. You have exercise, you have nutrition, you have play slash fun, you have sleep, you have learning, and you have relaxation. All those things are going to impact these things and vice versa, but you're going to adapt better when we put the whole thing together. So that's what I have for episode number 96. And if you have any questions, you can always post them below. If you haven't already done so, please leave a review on iTunes. That'll help me out a lot. And next week, we'll be back with episode number 97. Hope you enjoyed it. Peace. You've been listening to The Inner Strength Show. If you enjoyed the show, remember to subscribe, rate, and review us in iTunes.